Daryl, let's keep going here with tuning. So um, you mentioned about the strings, and I think a lot of people haven't really looked inside of a piano very much. A lot of people don't have grand pianos, and it's not advisable for um, young people to be taking apart their pianos mm -hmm. at home, I think. Um, I always say it's sort of like uh, getting under the hood of the car, and uh, you can do some damage there for sure. But um, you, you talked about these uh, strings, and um, if you look at them, they change color. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So the, the, as we get the bass section, so we basically have three sections, the bass, the tenor, and the treble. Uh, the bass section, because we need that mass, we need that, that low frequency, they, they're actually copper round uh, steel strings. So you can see as, as we get lower down here, away, uh, we need that mass. Um, so as we go up, we, we have two in the lower tenor, and then we get into the, and they're different gauges. So uh, as we get higher, we have a higher gauge. So the, the thickness of the wire is, is less, it's, it's thinner. And uh, because we need to get the, we need to get the higher, higher pitch. If we had a, if we had a large, a, a, a thicker string it wouldn't work the scaling of the instrument would be off so when we break when we break a string or if a, a string breaks we have to replace it with the exact same gauge uh, so we can get that that right right scaling this is all Pythagoras who discovered the laws of acoustics of course and uh, lots to explain to um, people who don't have a lot of understanding of um, nodes and, mm -hmm. and uh, frequency and uh, overtone series. We'll have to do a whole other series on that at some point. Uh, we've been focusing on tuning and um, I know my students sometimes come to their lessons and um, they say that my piano sounds really different from their piano. Um, often having an upright piano at home. Uh, these pianos in my studio are, um, so this is a Steinway B and a C7 Yamaha. Uh, they are sort of the next in line to the concert grand, so they're long. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about the length of the strings and what that does to the sound. Yeah, so uh, the, the way it made sense to me when uh, I was explained and the way I explain it to customers coming into the store, uh, each piano manufacturer has a flagship piano and that's typically in the size of a concert grand, a nine foot concert grand. So they spend all of their resources in, in making the best piano for the stage. Uh, so all the concert halls around the world have a concert grand piano. If not, then they compromise with a, a seven foot piano, uh, which is considered a semi-concert grand for a lot of reasons. So all this product uh, development goes into this concert grand piano after 20 years, here's our piano. Well, we have, not everybody can afford or fit uh, a concert grand in their piano or concert hall. So everything is a compromise. Uh, as we shrink the piano, our, our soundboard, which is the speaker, we talked about that earlier, which is this wood underneath, that, that, that actually moves up and down. Um, longer strings, so we're gonna get more texture, more color, as a pianist, we'll have uh, more control over volume. And, and as a listener, it's much more interesting to listen to a nine foot rather than a seven foot, even though if we only heard seven foot, that would be a nice piano, but there is a difference. And, and also within the action, the actual mechanism, it's also compromised. So the nine, if we look at the nine foot as this is our premium product, everything is a compromise. And, that, and as we get into um, very small, grand pianos for instance like a, a four foot or a four foot eleven piano the the uh it's it really hard for a manufacturer to make that an even and a quality sound so when you hear a smaller piano that sounds good they've got some really good engineering because you hear you hear a lot of smaller pianos that sound like not very good <laughs> yeah i hear a lot of that and uh people think they can't fit that larger pianos into their house i hear this a lot just keep in mind, everybody, that the part that you're fitting into the house is that narrow part over there. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, for inches in difference of size, uh, you can definitely um, hear a really big difference in the sound. Yeah. Um, I'm always trying to uh, convince people, you know, if they're getting a grand piano to get a, a larger one. Yeah. What about upright pianos? 
Yep, um, it, it's a totally different action. Uh, same, same. We can look at it the same way. So an upright piano is inverted. It goes against the wall. It does take up less room. Right. So all, everything is kind of it's like turned flipped up. up. Yeah. yeah. And this this is actually on the top, so we, we can tune it so the the harp goes basically the opposite way. Um, the action is totally different. So the optimum. Um, action is, is a grand piano because we're using more gravity there's more levers and springs within a uh, an upright action so we're compromising they, they, they've done a great job uh, but it's still not a grand piano um, so we have more control in a, in a grand piano there there's called the repetition uh, lever so you, you actually don't have to come all the way back up and you can repeat again so the repetition and you know for a pianist repeating uh, it's important right so in an upright you have to come all the way up to repeat again so right. that's a huge difference so you're not going to see so upright. gravity helping you gravity with the grand, helping you grand and, piano and that with with that rep repetition lever it allows that jack one of these times we can maybe take out an action but the jack comes underneath that knuckle and it lets you fire again uh halfway so um, what about the different sizes of uprights? Yep, so we, in there, <clears throat> I, I've seen really large ones in the past. Typically the largest upright piano you're gonna see is a 52 inch vertical. And that gives you a good quality of sound. And again, everything is a compromise, 48, 45. As we get into the lower ones, um, you know, we're, companies are looking for price points. So instead of having a solid spruce, they're going to be going into a laminated board. So that speaker, um, so the soundboard yeah. is what you're talking about. So yeah. it's it's more costly for uh, a solid piece of yeah, wood. because they age that wood for a long time before they use it, right? Yeah, uh, they should. Um, at least uh, they should probably age it for a year. It's been sitting out, and then they kiln dry it to a certain percentage of, okay. of humidity. So when I was in Japan, they had different. Um, in the factory they had different woods going to different parts of the world and they dried them to different percentages because oh when, yes so there's something to talk about so, so when they when they first when yamaha first brought over pianos uh, 50 60 years ago those pianos didn't hold up well at all uh, because they weren't used to our the wood our, was our, designed for a wetter climate yeah right? and, and uh, that's we should probably talk about that because uh, i could well let's talk about on. it now because i think uh one of the things that we hear is that you can get a used Yamaha really cheap from some companies, some dealers here in town, and they're coming as used product from Japan. Yeah, so this is a big debate even among technicians and, and retailers. Uh, since day one, uh, myself and Steve, we've always been against uh, pianos that were made for a domestic market then shipped out. So not only does piano manufacturers, um, they make the wood a different percentage of humidity, they, they actually, when something sits in a humidity environment for years and years and years, it gets used to it and it should stay there. Once it gets moved across the country, across the world, gets into a drier climate like our, our winters in the homes, um, they, they can have some serious issues. So we always tell people you're taking a chance uh, when you purchase one of those pianos and it should sit here for years before you can even tell what it actually is. <laughs> right, right, okay. So um, we are definitely going to explore lots about the piano um, in other segments of this uh, blog series we're going to do. Um, I want to thank you again for taking the time to share your knowledge on this. And um, I guess to recap, uh, um, the big, bigger the better. Yeah, if, if we're looking <laughs> in at In terms of pianos. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and um, what, we didn't talk about brands, but we can do that another, another time. Uh, but that um, you know the the um, the strings and and how they set when you tune them is really really important. Yeah. Uh, the pins and getting someone who really knows what they're doing yeah. uh, to tune your piano is really important. Uh, and um, and this idea that uh, if you don't have your piano tuned for a long time, you may have some some big issues that are going to be costly, and perhaps it might not even be possible to tune right. that piano. Um, I just want to add that um, pianos in general have a, a lifetime. Um, they don't, it's not like a, a violin where, you know, a 200 year old Stradivarius is, uh, is so great um, that pianos um, 
aren't the same at all, um, and uh, they're more like an automobile, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still recondition them, yep. right? Yep. So we'll have to do a segment on that. All right, thank you very much, Daryl. Until the next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye.